Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on Ravenport. We are going to carry straight on from where we left off in the last episode. So let's get to it. So I need to load this one here up with seed. And we'll ignore the other one. Um, and we'll sort of see how well this one works just by doing this bit. So I'll bring you over to there and open up the tank and then we'll start loading that one up as that one takes fertilizer in it but I don't think that this one here even though that tank there would have fertilizer in it I don't think even the fastening it onto this one you're going to be able to use it we've only got 5,800 liters of cotton in here and I don't think cotton uses that much so that that was the other thing that i was wondering about was how many i'm going to, you know how much seed i'm going to use so by just filling up this one to start with and we sort of do a trial run around the edge of one of the fields or just put the, the big bud planting one of them somewhere um we'll, we'll be able to test just how much seed we're going to need and whether or not we're going to need that terminator bit on the back um because i suspect maybe we won't I know some crops, they, they seem to use a lot of seed, but the stuff in the cedars doesn't generally. So I'm kind of hoping that this in here, and the, 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 the cotton, doesn't use very much seed at all. Because I, I don't think I've actually planted any cotton anywhere on any of the maps yet. So this is going to be a first for me. Planting cotton is something that I've... Um, have I done it or not? Genuinely not sure right now if I've ever actually planted cotton. I don't think I have. In all of the series that we've done, all of the episodes that we've done so far, I think this is the first time I will have planted cotton. So we'll um, get to that. Now, how are you doing? One tiny little bit over here, and you're good to go. The, the, uh, the, the big buds, the cultivators, they're all doing everything that they should do. So you come over to here, and I will manually just do that bit like that. Everything else is already done. Uh, it's also already done all the way up through there. Yep, that's all good. Everything is perfect on there, exactly how it should. Oh, no, there was one tiny, tiny little bit of green I just seen there. We'll ignore it. We'll pretend that we didn't see it. And we will come down here with this one. Helper B has completed their task. Which one is Helper B? Uh, let's go big like this. Uh, that's the one down in the smaller, in, in the long field. Right, well, well, we'll get back to that one. We need the rake working next. Now, the problem with the rake is you kind of need to do most of it manually. Let's drop that off there. Um, because if I just leave the hired help doing it, it goes right to the edge of the field and then gets hung up trying to turn around on the edge of the field. But if I go and actually turn the field myself... Um, that if, if, I, if I go do once around the outside of the field myself, then it also has issues because the hired help will still go across the lines that I've already done. Um, so ultimately, it's, it's really bad. It, it doesn't seem to like hired help at all. So I'm going to try and do it like this so that we are two widths inside the edge of the field. I don't know if I'm quite two widths there. I think I'm actually more than two widths there. Uh, but the plan is I want to be roughly two widths inside the field and then just start doing it like this. All the way in round like that. Probably not going to do this very well at all, am I? Now bring that down through there. Um, yeah, I, th I think I'm just going to end up making a horrible mess of this, but we'll try. Because I know everybody does keep telling me that this is what I'm supposed to do anyway. I'm, I'm supposed to do the land work and then finish up with the outside edges. I've, I've never really used a big rake like this. Not for rowing stuff up. I've always used a small one. Um, like a, a small hay bob. So uh, this is one thing that I've never really been involved with is using a rake. The only time I've used a rake is when I'm just sort of rolling straw uh, from one row to the next either combining rows of straw, so I'm following what the combine's already done, 
or I'm um, just moving single rows of straw from one point to the next in order to facilitate it being dried out um, because it's gotten rained on. And that's, that is literally the only work that I've ever done with a big rake like this. So rowing up um, a field of hay with a rake, that isn't actually something I've done... I, you know, I'm, I'm struggling to think, have I actually used a rake for rowing up the field of hay? I don't, you know, I, I honestly don't think I have. I may have done, like once, may have done, but I, I really don't think I have. I really don't think I've ever actually used a rake for rowing up hay. I think it is literally just uh, a bit of straw. Um, I know I have done it with straw that's gotten rained on. And instead of just rolling it over, we went over it with a turner and we spread the straw out. And then we went over with a rake afterwards and we rode it all back up again. But again, I was still following the rows because the um, the turner that we used to spread straw out, it didn't spread it that far. It spread it less than the width of the rake, which was less than the width of the combine as a whole anyway. So it wasn't like a, a, a great big thing that uh, I went and did. It was like I'm just, just sort of still following pre-existing rows. I've never actually gone along and made my own rows as I've been going around the field. And I don't know, I, I, I'm starting to feel like maybe there's, this is something I'm, I've, I've been lacking in my life. Maybe, maybe I do need to go and experience this somewhere. I need to find a farm somewhere and do a bit of raking or, you know, go and buy my own field somewhere and, and, and do a little bit of raking. That not not just with a small hay bob, but on a, on a grander scale, on a bigger scale, because the the rowing up that I've done with a hay bob, um, I did. I can't remember how I used to do it now. I think I used to do like three or four rounds around the outside, and then um, once I'd done that, I'd then start doing the land work, straight lines up and down, and then once I'd finished doing the land work, there'd be one more round around the outside just to sort of finish off but usually it wasn't even like a fresh round around the outside it was an existing it was the last existing one around the outside that i would do uh one more time just to tidy it up and tidy up the the tail ends of all of the land work as well so you sort of do like that that the inside one you you'd end up doing that one twice and I'm pretty sure that some people do it like that with a rake and some people do it like this with a rake. I think that both of them are kind of valid options, really. So that's what I'm going to do right now, actually. I'm going to go now. I'm going to do right round the outside edge. I'm going to get up to here and I'm going to go all the way round the very outside edge of the field. And we're going to rake everything up exactly how we would normally, just going for an outside. I think I've left a little bit behind there. Never mind. Um... And then we'll go back inside and we'll do the second round. And then I will go in and finish doing the land work. And then we go over the second round again, just to sort of tidy it up. But that, that's how, yes, that is, that is it's, it was, it's been a long time, okay? You bear with me on some of these things. It's been a very, very long time since I've actually done it myself. i bring you carefully now through that bit like that. There we go. And I know that this is actually delaying the end of the series ever so slightly by adding this bit in, but I want to see this small baler in action. I really, really want to see this small baler in action, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of you were going to want to see the small baler in action as well, or at least aren't going to mind seeing the small baler in action. Um, because we, not only have we got to test the small baler, but we've got to test our trailer over there and see if that one does actually pick up and move the bales. Uh, because th that's a very important feature of it. The fact that we've got the, the trailer there already existing. We don't have to wait for ages for a brand new mod there. We've got a little bit right there that we're going to not be able to um, rake up. Um, yeah, the last time we had a small baler turn up quite a long way in advance of being able to actually pick them up by uh, mechanical means or by auto-loading magic. Auto load, auto magic, magic is is just wonderful. If we if we can use auto magic at any point, then I'm I'm game. I I like auto magic. It is one of my favourite methods. Um, so we used the small baler 
and then we weren't actually able to pick up the small bales. And this is something that I really didn't like at the start of FS17 when, well, once we got the small baler. We had to wait a while. And eventually we got a small bale trailer where we got some um, people started doing scripts for small bales, putting them onto the auto loads, and everything was all tickety boo and wonderful again. But up until that point, we either had to manually put them on the trailer or we had to use option two, which I didn't particularly like either, um, which was to use the big bale setting. And it would class the small bales as big bales, but it would just sort of suspend them in the middle of the air, hovering above the trailer, and that was all you could do with them. You, you couldn't really do anything else. And you can see already here just how far out I was for my guesses. For I knew that I was getting for, you know quite a long way out up here. I'm curious how the small bale, is, I'm curious how the small baler is going to cope with these um, extremely wide sort of lumps of row right here. I think it's going to struggle a little bit. Uh, that one there, though, I'm going to bring that down like that. And then we will turn. And we've got a little tiny bit left over, but it's not actually as much as I thought it would be. We might just be able to leave that and let the small baler gather it up just as it is. Instead of worrying too much about it. Although when we come back round again, for a, although I wasn't actually planning to come back round down on this bit to do a tidy up run. Um, the it, it might actually tidy it up quite nicely. Up over there. That's I love the way that the rake does actually tidy up that bit. Right? The, the rake, it goes... The, the hay turner and the mower, they both struggle to get that really rough bit. But the rake goes over it without any issues whatsoever. It picks it up with no problems at all. i bring you to there, and then we stop. And now we come back down again. And now we've got... Turning too sharp. Now we've got our rows all marked out and ready to roll. So I should now be able to drop into this bit right here, and we're away. Okay. Now, I know that one of the big buds has finished its work. The other one is still working in the field. We do need to go up there, and we do need to deal with that, and we will, but we just want to finish doing this first. And uh, bailing first. We'll take, we'll take the baler as the priority. We'll do this, and then we'll go and go back to dealing with the big buds and doing the cultivating up there. Um, the second big bud, I will move that one into the other fields, so then we, we've sort of got that bit being dealt with. Uh, but the first one, actually I suppose I could, once I've done this, before I go to doing the baling maybe. I'll see, because I'll, um, I'm sort of thinking that if, if I go around the outside edge with the cultivator, that bit's done, I could then immediately get started on the planting. Um, because the planting is a, a big job that we're going to need to get done. So if I was to get started on that sooner rather than later, we're not going to be sort of sat around waiting for absolutely ages for planting. Okay. Especially as the Helper J has now completed its tasks as a task as well. Tasks. Um, it's single task. Um, we'll do it. We will do it. You have persuaded me. I've, I've heard you talking to the screens. Each and every one of you sending forth your psychic vibes back in time. And I have picked up on them, and I know now that you all want me to finish the cultivating and get started on that before I do the baling. We all know that I'm not going to get started on baling on this week's recording session. Um, this is going to be next week's recording session before I actually get to the baling. And this is something that I'm sure you all have accepted by this point. Now, by my calculations, I'm a good, a good portion of the way through Monday's episode at the moment. So, we're definitely, like, my recording session, I try to I aim to do um, up until the end of Monday's episode. And then I start a fresh ep recording session for uh, Tuesday's episode. It, 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 I do sort of have part of Tuesday's episode done. And this week, I sort of, well, last week now, um, I sort of did it a little bit differently to how I normally do. I normally try to sort of join them together fairly seamlessly. But because of the mods and stuff I wanted to show you, uh, last week, I, I, I didn't. We were just kind of... Last week for you, it's still the same recording session for me. I, I'm, I'm st still going. Um, so, 
I think I'm just going to get to the end of this row. We'll stop. We'll, we'll come back and we'll finish this up. Because we've, we've been do I've been continuously doing this for a little bit. So if I just ignore that for a minute and I go to you, you look like... Oh, there's a little bit down here and there's a couple patches right there. We'll deal with them later. I will deal with them, but I will deal with them later. Right now, I'm not going to worry about them. What I'll do instead is I will go up here and... I'm hoping I can sort of get that lined up reasonably well. I would say about there. And doing a bit there. I go to that. There we go. That one should now go through and it'll do that field there. So that bit's easy. Got that bit taken care of. You out here seem to have a slight issue with drivers, except that these drivers are doing this, they're playing this old game again, where they keep driving forwards, as I try to reverse out of their way, they keep driving forwards, so then I have to do things like drive up over their bonnet, with a massive great big culty plow, um, probably not what they wanted, I don't know if their insurance would cover that either, um, although they'd probably try and claim it on my insurance really, wouldn't they? They'd probably try to state that, that that I'm the one at fault. When clearly I'm not. Clearly I'm doing my best to just carry on and, and earn my living and, and do what i got to do. And they're getting in the way and making life deliberately difficult for me. Which I don't think is, 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 is very nice really. I, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think they should be doing things like that. But they do. They do. They, they, it's it's victimisation is what it is. It's cars versus tractors, and the law would generally side with the cars because, well, the tractor's like really big, and so then they'll say, oh, well, you're, you're using your size and weight to, to threaten others and, and drive them off the road. I wasn't trying to drive them off the road. I was trying to get off the road myself. It wasn't my fault. I'm the innocent party here. Just because my cultivator happened to go right over the top of the car, it's not my fault. The car was in the wrong place at the wrong time, is it? I cannot be held responsible for things like that. Now, I do have a little bit down here that I need to tidy up. And that is that strip down through there. I'm going to start back here because sometimes like the, the game actually registers a strip as not being done when it has been done. It's a very weird way that it does. I'm not quite sure how it does it. But it's, it's to do with the visual and, and where it actually... Um, the, the visual and, and the actual bit sort of crosses over. It's, it's a little bit peculiar. But I am very pleasantly surprised by the hired help and this tractor and their ability to actually go through and cultivate everything on here. I, di I honestly didn't think that it would do it, but it has. It's gone right the way through and done absolutely everything there, which is quite impressive. I'm hoping that the planting will end up doing the same. We've got the planter down the other end. So we'll be able to start that one working on this field. Now that's kind of my next plan, is we'll start that one working on this field. But in order to be able to make that work, i got to go all the way around the edge first. And then i got to go right down the other end to go and get that um, planter off of the lorry that it's uh, fastened on to down there. Or truck, as you'd call it in the States. Okay, now that bit there should all be done. So I can whiz up around here a little bit faster. Now lower it into the ground. And, right, we've got, quite sure what's happened, oh, I see, it's, it's where it's sort of turned around and then gone into the ground. Up here, I might have to shunt around a little bit to get all of that bit. I think I'm going to have, yeah, I, I haven't quite got enough room to pick up all of that, but we've got room to do some of it. Um, we've got no fertiliser on this and we are going to want fertilizer that's going to be sort of our biggest issue is having to put fertilizer across all of it that's going to probably take excuse me that's probably going to take longer than any of the other jobs that we've got to do i would have thought because unfortunately the seed drill doesn't apply fertilizer at the same time as seed it only does hang on planters there yeah, see that one does both. That one does both, that one does both, that one does not. 
So even though it's 18.2 meters and considerably better, this one's like only 9 meters. 9 meters wide, even that one, that they're, they're not good enough. So I do want the Great Plains one, but at the same time, I'd rather have it planting a little bit better than that. And it's not going to. So we are a little bit limited on how we're going to be able to do this. I'm hoping we'll get through it all right. It just means that we, instead of having to go over and do one coat of fertilizer across the field, we're going to have to go over and do two coats of fertilizer across the whole field. Um, well, most of the field. Some of it has got the grass on it that will... In actually, I, I don't actually know at the moment. Let's have a look. Let's go to you, growth, soil... Comp there, right there. That does already have some. A little bit of lime is needed there, but we'll... Well, no, we've got lime turned off. And it says that it needs ploughing all the way around. Oh, of course it does. Cultivator doesn't take care of the ploughing need. The cultivator creates the fields. If they allow create field bit, it just creates the field with the cultivator. It doesn't actually count as being ploughed, even though technically it's sort of ploughing it. Um, you've still got to go and use an actual plough to do that. So... Um, we've, even though it sort of looks like we have, we haven't actually gone and ploughed the bits around the edge, but, uh, you can turn that requirement off as well. It's the, uh, periodic ploughing bit. Let's have a look. Let's go into our settings and check on here. We've got steering sensitivity, uh, interactive, radio, GUI, no, it's none of those. Okay. Every time you go to general settings, you try to switch out of general settings, and everything sort of freezes up for a minute. There we go. That's better. All right. Turn off periodic plowing. Plant withering. Everything else is off. Plant growth normal. Okay. Uh, might just turn on helper refill fertilizer later on. We won't do that just at the moment. But we might do that a little bit later on. Have the helper refill the fertilizer as we're going around the field. Just to make it a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do one... Because we've only got the bottom line to do. Just the running alongside the railway. So I will run alongside the railway with the cultivator. And it's probably in places going to leave just little tiny bits behind. That it doesn't quite... Or oh, actually it might not. I was thinking it might leave some little tiny bits behind like it did up over there, but now I'm sort of looking at it. It probably won't. I was just thinking we can, we, we're can we going to have to come back up here anyway, so we'll be able to, we'll just keep going in one straight line. We won't stop and sort of fix each patch. We'll go all the way down through, and then we'll come back up and we'll pick up the little tiny bits that we've missed. But it doesn't look like we're going to miss any bits. So I guess going to get all of them, because it's single widths all the way down through. The way that the cultivator worked... And the big buds, it did it all. It's done a really, really neat and tidy job all the way up through there. So I'm thinking we do exactly the same thing with the planter. We get the planter, we set it going um, just on one side of the field, and we just leave it to work. We don't touch it at all. We just let it go and do its thing, and then we come back to it later on and go round the edge of the field, tidying it all up afterwards rather than sort of tidying as we go or trying to do once around the edge of the field first we do we let the hired help do everything and then we do our once around the edge of the field as the final thing to do a tidying up job um now i know some people have actually said in real life that this is what they do in real life they they do the land work first and then they would go around and they should do the outside edge of the field as the final bit i never ever did that any farm that I've ever worked on, we always did the out at the headlands first. Always did the headlands followed by the land work. Um, never did it the other way around. But I've been told by uh, several people now that actually this is the way they do it. They do all the land work and then they use the headland as just sort of a, a tidy up thing at the end of it. That's, that's the, the last little bit that they go and do. And it does seem a strange way of doing things, but I, you know, looking at this, it, it does actually seem, I suppose, like a, a good idea. Because um, with a big cultivator like this, you can't really, you, you don't really want to be turning the corner too much while you're using the cultivator, do you? It's not good for the cultivator. I mean, you, you do. I know that people do. Um, but you want to try to minimize the amount of turns. And if you've already gone around the outside edge of the field... 
and then you're working the land work, either you're compressing it back down again after you've been over it because you're lifting and turning at the ends of the rows, or you're leaving it down in the ground um, so that it's cultivating up your wheel marks, and then whenever you're turning on the headlands, it's causing you issues that way because you're turning on the headland and um, you, you've sort of got your cultivator turning sharp corners while it's still in the ground. Neither of these things is a particularly good option. You, you don't really want either of those happening, do you? So, um, it's, it's actually quite cool that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sort of really starting to understand why some of these things do actually happen in real life. Why, why people do use some of these different methods and techniques that I've never seen used before. And it sort of never really occurred to me before. Now, I'm going to bring you over here. And I'm going to drop that cultivator right there, like that. And then I'm going to go back over this way. I'm going to go back over on... I'm going to cross the tracks, just like this. There we go, bounce across them like that. And we're going to go whizzing down there. And we're going to get the seed drill hooked onto this one. So that we're ready to get started on here. Now, we've got to remember, before I do planting over in those fields, I've got a couple little tiny spots at that end of the field, as well as the other bits that I need to finish with the cultivator. So when our other big bud is finished, then we want to go back down there and want to deal with that. But, oh. He's actually gone right the way across. He's sort of, he's bridged the gap. The reason he will have done that is because it, it was only one width. And if it wasn't like 100% perfectly lined up, it would have gone across that gap without any trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'll turn the hired help off there a second. And I'm going to go and grab this little tiny spot right here. It's unlikely that there is any other spots. But if I can just grab that one a second, like that. I don't see any sign of anything else. Um... And I can run back over here, and this field has then been done. We, we will have done this one. We've only got a tiny, tiny little bit more to do here, which means that we're going to want to get another seed drill up here and get started on planting here. So I'll go right there, press H, and you're away. We can go. So go back to this one. We'll run up there and we'll grab that seed drill. Now, we had options for the seed drill. We we had the choice of either a pickup, uh, either a hitch like that, a, a, a trailer hitch, or we could have used a three-point link hitch. Now, obviously, the big bud doesn't come with three-point links. Uh, that is one constraint with the big bud, is that there are no three-point links available for it. None at all. It, it's just simply not an option for this monstrous tractor here. So, let's get you to there. It's this one that I want now. And I'll bring that one forward. Now, yeah, we got 5,800 cotton. So, the big question is, are we going to want that one just like that? Or do we actually want the Terminator seed um, thing to go with it? Are we going to want the seed thing to go with it? The, the seed cart on here as well or are we just going to use that one so let's jump into here back this bad boy up and get that one hitched on I really ha oh it does we already know that it hitches on we've already tested it that one hooks onto there like that and now I can unfold it and this one we should actually be reversing when we unfold because Otherwise, it's putting too much pressure on that bar and the hydraulics that would be used for unfolding that. So we definitely wouldn't want to do that just by sitting still and doing it. And let's get going. There we go. Straight in with the cotton. And how fast are we using this stuff up? I'm thinking maybe we are using it up a little bit too fast. I mean, 40 up to there. I don't know. I don't know about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back that one down there like this. There we go. I'll bring you to there. And we'll just leave you there for a second. Well, there we go, folks. I'm afraid that's it. We've run out of time, which means that we need to head on home. 
So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.